Welcome. Welcome. Housewives of True Crime. What's up? I see you have a special guest today. I know. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you get to see the cutest dog in America. Scout. One of them for sure. No, that she is. <laughs> Everyone at the vet agrees. I had to take her to the vet today. That's why I look less than stellar. You had on, so we'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm wearing a hat. I'm like back to like doing shit. Feels a freaking amazing. Good. Dropped my kids off at camp, went and ran an errand by myself, had some time to kill, went to Starbucks. All by your lonesome? All by myself. Oh gosh, sometimes I just oh. crave sitting in the Starbucks by myself. Oh my and God. is here in Texas, you can now sit at Starbucks. Can you do that? Was it open? Uh, there seating? was a bunch of there's tables that are off limits. Nobody's oh, really no. sitting What's down. It? But I just enjoy being with the masses. I'll tell you what, there was some <laughs> some snafu in the uh parking lot. There were three sheriffs there. Oh. And um I just love being nosy and talking to the other people that are waiting for their coffee drinks. Like, yeah. What's going on out there? Anybody see what happened? I yeah. just love it. Did they I give just you love the- it? The lowdown? No, no one really no. knows, but you know, we just bonded <laughs> over, you know, people like my hat. Yeah. We're just talking. We're just talking to people. It's crazy. There's some controversy up in my hood also. Um, and maybe soon enough I can tell you guys all about it, but I'm kind of that nosy person too. I'm like, what happened around here? Ooh. I need to know the I need to know the gossip. You guys, we usually give the gossip. But we got to know the gossip, so, you know, the scandals. Right. But anyways, thanks, uh, Scout, for making your YouTube debut. So my husband was sick. And he's like, that dog just laid on me for two days, nonstop. That's what dogs do, or good dogs at least. I know, but I feel so betrayed because we slept in separate rooms, so I wouldn't catch the funk, you know? Right. Kicked his, kicked his ass out. And, um, then she didn't, she didn't want to be with me. Oh, when you got the funk, she didn't want to be with you. No, no. She still wanted to be with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's nicer than you, I guess. He's not. She's like an abused girlfriend or something. You know, she likes the people that are like a little mean to her. He pays her like no mind at all. I give her like so much attention. She looks at me like I'm like a clinger. She's like, no, I don't, I don't want that. Oh, Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I see how you can be like that. Um, My dogs have been shitting all over my house because it's been raining so much. And it's not just rain. It's crazy thunder, like the craziest thunder. And so they're like, you really want me to go outside? So I have to go out to actually have them go. I have to stand in the. Yeah, I used to have to do that. Thunder. And lightning, hoping mm-hmm. that I mm-hmm. don't get struck by it while my dog mm-hmm. freaking pisses in the oh, pouring yeah. rain. My um, basset hound would, I would have to hold an umbrella over her because if a drop of rain hit her, she was not going to go. I know, but then they'll go in your house. It's the problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Oh my God. So my neighbor today, we're doing the across the street talks. My poor neighbor, mm-hmm. she's like nine months pregnant. She's like, oh my God, I, my dog, she's like, I've got the carpet cleaners here today. This all happened while I'm loading my kids up to go to camp. Got the carpet cleaners today because Bo shit all over the place. And I'm like, oh, my husband shit all over the place too. He's got the funk. And then I realized realized that Bo was our dog. I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, I just remembered. Sorry. I'm a little slow in the morning. The dog, like you're coming to the vet. She's like, yeah. Because they, you thought they named their kid Bo. I don't. Her, that's not her kid. I know her kid's name, but I was. Like, oh, okay. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just, are... I legit am a little slow in the morning. I'm telling you, I'm just getting used to being back out with the people, getting places. Okay, okay, I'll give it to you. I'll give it. But to if you. she didn't think I was crazy, she does now. Oh sure. gosh. So I have some guests coming into town this week. Well, I have guests coming in for weeks on end, but um, I have somebody coming in on Thursday. And you know, I told you my hair girl, she books out forever. And I just got a reminder. It was like hair appointments this Thursday. I'm like, like, oh shit. Fuck. 
what time? So I text, I'm like, what time does your flight get in? It's, there's no way I can get my hair done. Right. So I have to just, and you, you guys could see I've got, you know, it's not so bad, but it's going to be real ombre by the time I can get it done because the next available yeah. appointment is not until a couple days before September, August oh 27th. Whoa. Whoa. It's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I'll have real long hair by then. Maybe grow a couple more inches, but uh, yeah, you know, it helps baby powder. It kind of like lightens up your blonde hair. Oh, really? I'm gonna try yeah, it. It makes your roots look better. It's good stuff for dry shampoo and um, smells good. Mm -hmm. Smells like a baby's booty. Heard it gives you cancer if you use it on your vajay. Not you Don't cannot. Do that. Okay, so but I uh, use it on your head. That's the Johnson and Johnson one, I think. If I'm correct, that's the one that. Or maybe it was all of them that used a certain kind of um, talk, but the Hello Bella one does not, just to let you know, doesn't oh, okay. have that nasty shit well, in I'm it. I'm sure it works perfect on your hair, too. I'm going to try it. Try it. And your vajay? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> do you have a story to tell? I do. <laughs> Besides the baby powder one? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's Deal. do it. Okay, Tab. Today's case is the case of Mr. John Fox. Foxy. I is he Foxy? No. Oh. Too damn bad, right? Yeah, because I feel like with that name. Uh, no. Um he's kind, of, it's, that, he's kind uh, of nauseating, actually, looking. That Lakers player. Oh, he was so cute. Oh my Rick God. Fox? Yes, Rick S Fox. Total oh swoon. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was on the hunt for a case that did not involve murder. Sorry. Did I just say baseball player? Did you say? Oh, basketball player. Basketball. Right. Sometimes even I need a break from the murder. We all do. We all do. Okay. And so I found this dirty dog, John Fox. Okay. He got himself in a pickle and it involves big money, sex, and wine. Oh, so I, I like the sound I of know, this. Right? It's perfect for us. Okay. So, John Fox was a wine dealer extraordinaire in Alameda, California. Alameda is bougie AF. It's like kind of like a island off of the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I found a cute 1800 square. Uh, beat bungalow for sale for the bargain price of 1.5 million dollars i think that is the cheapest real that estate that is you the can cheapest find you can Alameda. find there that's yeah. right yeah bay area bougie is like a different bird it's like a lot of like old money they're very like artsy classic style you know i love northern california but i would say if you're not familiar Many Northern California residents, not as big of fans of Southern California as we are of them, right? Of what? Of Southern Californians? No, like Southern Californians love Northern California, but Northern Californians don't love Southern Californians. Yeah, I think because we don't get it in Southern California. We just love everybody, right? More so oh. than like up there, they're a little bit snotty. But I will tell you, there's a lot of new money up there in the more recent years because of the tech boom. That you know what? You're there. probably right. So yeah. before it was a lot of older money, but once it's like a little Googles more hippie and, up there, a yeah. little more oh, classy. Sure. And we're just a little, a little more flashy people, you know, um, with it's money. definitely more granola up there. Yeah. And down south, people like to drive fancy cars and yeah, go to fancy we're, restaurants and wear um, fancy shoes. Noxious and we love it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's yeah. why I also enjoy Dallas because <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit of noxious too versus like an Austin. We, okay. And we love it. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. John Fox owned this wine shop called Premier Crew in Berkeley, California, which may be the hippie capital of the world. Okay. But it's a little Truth. ironic that this is where his shop was because John wasn't the hippie type. 
he dressed like he stepped out of maybe like a Ralph Lauren catalog and he drove real flashy cars. He had a fleet of them like Maseratis, Bugattis, Bentleys. Whoa, no way. Yeah. So one of his former employees at the wine shop said that he coveted his fancy cars so much so that he parked every day behind the shop in between the only handicap space and a regular space so that he could keep like a bubble around his car. Okay. So he's that asshole that takes up two spaces and one of them being handicapped, which makes him like a double asshole. He's a real gem. Okay. Okay. But you know, men like don't get away with shit like that. Right. They're like, yeah, "Yeah, whatever. Write me another ticket. Yeah. Okay. He was also known by the employees at a local coffee shop called Artiste. Side note, I looked up this coffee shop Mm -hmm. that he spent so much time at and I wanted to hate it, but it sounds really good. I knew you were going to love it. I knew. Yeah. I was like, this. They could, the name is great. It's going to be so cool. They roast their own beans. Oh my God. I love that. Like, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, that sounds so good. I mean, it's but, so, like, so coffee snobby, but I'm like, I maybe I need to try that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... Um, at this bean roast and shop, mm-hmm. John was known by the employees to come in with a different, very, very young lady every day of the week. Different one. Different one. Like on Mondays, okay. he had Sonia and Tuesdays, he Just, had Jessica. Oh, yeah. And so they were like, I wonder what kind of car he'll be driving and what, how old the girl he's going to come in with is. Okay. Okay. It's kind of fun being like a barista. You get to oh, hello. enjoy the daily trivia. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's see. Right. You know, they're all yeah. sitting there like talking. Right. Gossiping. Okay. So John, by the way, very married, married to a lovely woman, 20 years younger than him. Oh, wait, he's married, but coming in with different girls anyway. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. So despite being, um, married totally john had up. this habit of flying these young ladies in and out of berkeley to rendezvous with him after he would meet them on sites like seeking arrangements mm. and sugar babies what he would do is he would show up at premier crew apparently and then he would tell his employees at the wine shop that he had to go get his back cracked and <laughs> That's when he was spending all his time at the coffee shop, meeting up with these ladies and then taking them God knows where. Okay. Got it. And so none of these employees were the wiser. Nobody really knew he had this other thing going on. Turns out um, John spent about a million bucks in a few short years on getting what he called his back cracked. Somehow, I don't know, he managed to keep his side chick shenanigans on the DL in one Bay City area away from the life he lived 20 minutes away in Alameda. In Alameda, he was like, it was totally different. He was kind of like the center of this pretty elite circle. John and his wife belonged to multiple country clubs, of course, and John was like the wine guy. And you know, being involved in any kind of alcohol sales kind of ups your cool points. I mean, I don't think it really matters. I think we up people's cool points that sell beer. Like it doesn't really matter where, you know, like that's like the fun person, the alcohol sales person. Well, you gotta be fun. Yeah. Right. You gotta take people out. They gotta like you. I mean, there's a lot of different distributors, right? There's like, you could buy it from this guy or get buy it from this guy listen i think you could rep fireball and we'd think like you must be fun you must be cool whatever <laughs> right yeah you're meister I whatever mean- <laughs> it's alcohol we're into it oh my god are we that desperate okay. it sounds like we're we should be called the are desperate we that desperate, or- <laughs> desperate, house <laughs> desperate house true crime. True crime. <laughs> yeah maybe. new name new name maybe okay okay so i mean I'm just saying 
John was the cool guy and in this crowd of like it's all you know okay. foodie, foodies and wine snobs right totally Where he lived right so John's like he's living the dream of a douchebag he was doing the fine living and utterly full of himself in a beautiful home in a prestigious area with his wife and his daughter thanks to his successful wine shop on the other side of the bay in Berkeley he's driving cars you know, fancy cars and getting his back cracked on the regular. So like I said, he's living the dream of a douchebag. And in 2016, John was 66. So it seemed like it had been working out for him for a while. Yeah. Okay. Well, it didn't work out forever or clearly I wouldn't be talking about him. To understand the downfall of John Fox, first you have to understand how a wine shop business like his ran. Okay, so John sold wine from his shop, and the shop itself was very impressive and well-known by wine collectors. It was a very sophisticated place to pick up your flavor of vino. It was huge, and the most valuable wines were all displayed in this temperature-controlled glass room in the center. The employees that worked there were super knowledgeable. They wore business suits. There wasn't any obvious reason to think that anything about John or his business was less than, you know, legit. But in addition to selling actual bottles of wine out of the shop, John also sold what are called futures on wines. Futures on Mm -hmm. wines are like a thing. So these wine collectors are all about the futures, which are essentially bottles of wine before they have actually been bottled in released it's an investment that can really go up exponentially in value right what these wine collectors do is familiarize themselves with the most coveted wineries of the world and then they study like you know weather conditions that preceded the year before the harvest and then they buy wine in the form of futures knowing that the wines that they bought will still need years to age before they are uncorked and rated but once they are they become much more expensive and much more difficult to acquire. So enter John Fox. He sold futures to over 9,000 customers all over the world. Some of his customers had invested over a million dollars in wine futures with him. That's quite a wine collection. Yes. Yeah, it it (laughs) surely is. Right? Okay. So John was able to snag so much business because his prices were lower and he would also store wine for his customers in perfect conditions at no additional charge in his warehouse until his customers asked to have it shipped to them. The thing was, was that most people preferred to have John store their wine for them for a long time. It's like just taking up space at their house and here he's got it in, you know, perfect conditions, you know, whatever. I don't know, but that's how it was. And because of this, it enabled John to run a Ponzi scheme of sorts of wine. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Right. Did the same people have the same wine sitting there in their same little, like just switch out the name of the, their locker. As a matter of fact, they did. Yeah. What John was doing was just like that. It was quite the juggling act. Yeah. I can imagine. He wouldn't actually buy the wine when people paid him for it. And he would just scramble to get uh, his hands on like a bottle here and there to pacify the customers that would like make enough noise to physically get their hands on what they purchased. Yeah. And then he would continue to tell them that like, oh, the rest of your wine is on the way. So he never like completely made good with anybody, but sometimes he would just like shut them up for a little while, right? He also did stuff like you're saying, buy a case and then photograph it and then send the same photograph Mm -hmm. to multiple customers as proof the wine that they purchased was being stored. We are talking about millions of dollars in wine. And in 2011, it was apparently like this epic year for Bordeaux. That's like the year. And John had sold a ton of futures of it. 
and it was worth a ton to collectors. And by 2016, they were basically beating down his door to get their hands on it. Well, employees were given dates that John just like pulled out of the air, like tell the customers that the wine will arrive on the next cargo ship, whenever, right? Mm -hmm. His employees began to suspect that something shady was going on, but then John would just show up in another new car and they would just think like, oh, well, he must not be worried about anything. He must know what he's doing. Yeah. With the beautiful wine store itself, John's home, cars, they couldn't imagine that this was all, you know, just based on an elaborate juggling act, but things got to the point where they started spending all their time fielding angry calls and emails. At one point, a woman just walks into the shop, takes a bunch of wine from the shelves and told the employees, go ahead, try and stop me, call the police because John owes me so much wine. This is like a drop in the bucket. And so they just let her. Yeah, because they probably knew. Yeah, I mean, they're like, what are we gonna do? They know that, you know, he owes these people you know, money. Okay. So word had started to get out that doing business premier crew was, you know, not favorable. These winos have wine forms. They talk about all things, you know, grapes and shit on the interweb. A relatively small customer that had only spent around $20,000 only um, I would still die if I spent that. Listen, some people seven. spent a million dollars on wine. Okay, so twenty thousand like dollars is a small. This is a small customer when it came to John. Yeah. Okay, so this twenty thousand dollar customer came across this form about Premier Crew and the shop and John Fox on something called Wine Berserker. And he started thinking to himself, oh, shit, I'm not the only one getting the runaround from this dude. What is a wino to do? Well, this dude, he took it to the streets, okay? And what that means to a wine nerd is the New York Times, okay? Okay. (laughs) Side note, obviously, I love wine. I mean, we both do. We drink it by, like, the gallon. Yeah, okay. But I am picturing the kind of people that are wine collectors of futures are all reading the New York Times, right? And along with, like, the Wall Street Journal, and they probably read, like, Architectural Digest. Are you telling me they're not... In town and country. They're not reading the Daily Mail on the Daily? Like... Like Probably I? not. <laughs> I just think it's like, if you want to, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. I mean, I just oh. think if you want to reach the wine future crowd, you just need to reach out in one of these publications. I think it's a pretty small group of people. Yeah. And people that are into wine futures, they're all like, I mean, they got to no, be I doing it. it a little bit, you know, right? Like maybe to impress each other or mm-hmm. something, you know, it's, it's a thing. So they like to see what's happening in the town and country. Got it. Right? Totally get it. Okay. So anyhow, the New York Times for years had this column called The Haggler. So the man that wrote it for years took on businesses that were unsatisfactory to their customers he would go after them relentlessly until they made their wrongs right. So the haggler would take on like a range of businesses from like Pottery Barn. Apparently they sold some couch that didn't have enough fluff or something. I think you I know? bought that couch. I re <laughs> my couch like 50 freaking thousand times. <laughs> well, listen, you were not the only one that was angry because the Pottery Barn got had to reimburse people after oh, the haggler. God. He's like relentless, okay, to like a single wedding photographer that screwed over some people, okay? Like okay. that was his jam, okay? So this guy writes into the haggler, and the haggler's investigation led him to unearth a multi-million dollars of wine fraud. I mean, it was like extra even for this guy. Yeah. Okay? So much so 
that when he put John on blast, it led to the FBI making an investigation, right? So John's pretty fucked. I mean, right? The pressure cooker that was John's life had been about to explode for a couple of years prior to his fraud being uncovered by the Hagler and the FBI. But the thing is, is John was actually being fraudulently pursued himself. How? You see, one of John's sugar babies was a serial extortionist. No way. Her name... Okay, I want to talk about how do we feel about this? Okay, her name was Sul Ki Yam, and she had John's number for reals. She had been giving him the shakedown, and like this was girlfriend, this was not her first rodeo. Okay, her MO was to meet guys on the interweb, and then charm them, sleep with them, and then extort them. Would start with her saying that she needed money for an abortion, and then it never stopped. Okay. Well, I mean, listen, I think that's not good on the regular, but to John, it's like you get a little taste of your own medicine. Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Okay. So she, this girl was savage. She would do her research about the men that she went after by looking on their social media. And then she would threaten to out them to their business partners, wives, kids. Over the last two years, John had paid her over $200,000. She would call or text him like 20 times a day. And the messages were like, okay, you dumb piece of shit. You pay me or you'll regret it. No. Yeah. She would do stuff like threaten to contact the president of his daughter's sorority at college. She would send him pictures of his wife that like his wife had posted that day. And just just to let you know, I know where your wife is. I know what car she's driving. I know what she's doing, you know, just to make sure that John knew she could out him at any time. Yeah. She also told John that she had figured out that his wine business was a load of bullshit and she was going to turn him in if he didn't hand over more money. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's all savage and desperate and horrible, but I also like 2% of me thinks like it's pretty smart. (laughs) Part of you thinks it's pretty awesome. It's like, it's crazy yeah do we feel sorry for her or no I don't feel sorry for her I mean do we feel sorry for, for him, him? I... we don't feel sorry for him either <sighs> do but we she did this to you a do. lot of men okay yes I feel sorry for all of the other ones yeah I think she's a real bad person for sure but two wrongs don't make a right right so like John's a bad person she's a bad person they're both stealing people's money I know, but the stuff like going to like the president of his daughter's sorority, like why, why that's real bad you're extorting him for money. Like, why well, are not, you going to cause his daughter pain? She didn't do anything to you. Right now. She's a real piece of work. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. But you also do have him who was also stealing millions of dollars from people. Yeah. It's just the perfect storm. It really is. Okay. Well, what ended up happening was the FBI hauled John's ass in. And at that point, John knew the jig was up. He was 66 years old. He straight told the FBI investigators, I'll tell you whatever I want. I'm the Bernie Madoff of wines. (laughs) Well, he was right. So he knew he was going to jail. He was yeah. like, I'm, yeah, yeah. He said, he, I'm not going to fight. And he said, by the way, this girl is extorting me. Like, you have any interest in investigating her? And hopefully they said yes. They did. Yeah, they did. They said yes. So they recorded conversations with her well, and John. Point, at that point, he was like, my wife's already going to know everything. He so. had nothing to lose. Yeah. 
this is where this girl like really blew it because she she got so greedy that she pushed it too far. She pushed yeah. him like over the edge. Yeah. So with the recordings of her and John, she was charged with extortion. She admitted to the courts that she had extorted over $300,000 from men, which is pretty bananas for a 25 year old girl that had just been like doing this hustle for three years. Where is this girl from? She lived in Washington, Nothing but I don't her. know. Do you know anything about her? No, I don't know much about, I don't know much about her besides yeah. that. And I tried to find her on the internet, but I mean, she's savvy AF. Obviously she's oh, yeah. leave, like, she a, changed like a her trace. name, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure she changed her name and everything because she doesn't want this haunting her. Right. Yeah. So I read the probable cause report that the FBI sent the Seattle PD. Like I told you, she's from yeah. Washington. Yeah regarding her extortion crimes in the report it details seven different victims of hers and how her manipulation worked so you know she would start by saying she needed an abortion and then say like if you really want me to get the abortion you have to go on a date with me again oh my and god and then they would have to would- do it yeah, they would do it. And then they would probably have they would sex do- with her again. They would they would do it because they would think like, oh, well, she's probably not even really pregnant. Like, so I'm just going to go and like determine like for myself if she is. And then and what? Then, She'd be wearing a fake baby bump? Then she would use that against them. Like if they were married or seen no, someone else, I mean. then she would threaten to tell their partners. And then she would like take pictures of them naked. Oh my God. And threatened to send it to everyone at their employer. I mean, she sounds, she sounds ruthless. I'm Back scared shit. Of her. She oh probably God. writes the meanest podcast reviews ever. She sounds okay. like somebody else we were talking about that was in the media recently. The, like dirt nap person. Oh yeah. Chrissy. Yeah. Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> that's some shit I could see coming out you know like dude that is gnarly like I don't even think about kind of stuff like that I could never it's It's so crazy crazy to me so and she started this at 22 like oh my gosh okay so guess what price she had to pay for being such a devil in disguise I hope jail time does she have jail time yeah. She got okay, 30 days think. in the clink. Oh, okay. I just blew it. Wait, I didn't hear it. I didn't actually didn't hear. Okay. What do you think it is? Um, seven guys, 10 years, 30 days. Shut the front door. No, 30 days, but she had to pay back $270,000 in restitution. And she probably never did that. She has probably like a 5,000 Louis Vuittons. Yeah, well, I think she probably, if you don't make steady payments with your restitution, then they haul your ass back in. I mean, maybe. They don't even haul anybody in these days. Oh, well. this was. <laughs> Do they? I don't know. This was then. I mean, I know that it was like the restitution thing was like real serious for Teresa Judice on Real Housewives mm-hmm. of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to pay that shit. Yeah, that's true. So whatever. Anyways, the good thing is her $270,000 in restitution that she had to pay back went to John's victims. Well, that's good. I mean, but that's like a drop in the bucket from what he stole from these people. Yeah, it really is. Oh, my God. Okay, so in exchange for John cooperating with the feds and Mm -hmm. giving up this girl, he got a deal where he only had to plead guilty to one count of wire fraud. No way. So he didn't go to jail either. He did go to jail for like 30 days. Also, no, no, a, a minute longer than 30 days. But before that happened, he had to file bankruptcy 
His bankruptcy detailed about $7 million in assets and $70 million in debt. $70 million is a lot of money. That's okay, a lot so of money. part of the bankruptcy was that feds came in and auctioned off everything. So they just like went into that beautiful wine store, tore it all up, tore it all up, right? So a lot of people showed up to the auction on the wine and, you know, everything else. I guess he had these like fancy French tapestries and shit, you know, Mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, is that they showed up to like see the spectacle of it all, but they actually didn't bid on it for the most part. Why? well, I mean, I kind of, I was thinking about it. I kind of understand. Right? You like, feel bad. I mean, talk about like legit leaving a bad taste in your mouth. Like, do you want to enjoy this bottle of wine at the expense of all these people? Right. I mean, but also by purchasing, you're doing them a favor by purchasing that wine because it's the only way they're going to get any of their money back. Right. So, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, so John's bankruptcy stated that he spent around a million dollars on side chicks, but it also said that his Ponzi scheme wasn't even actually all that effective. He had a huge overhead keeping the wine shop open, and when customers bugged him enough, he would actually end up purchasing the wine for them because... And because he had waited so long, yeah, so he much money. ended up paying top dollar, yeah. okay? I was thinking so, that like he's a way overpaying. I tried to look for a bottle of wine one time that was like out of, you know, commission and it was yeah. crazy expensive. I mean, like nothing I would ever pay, but that's what he was doing for sure. If he was like buying futures on some awesome wine. Okay. And can I just tell you when I was researching about this future scam, John, this is not the first person to do this. There's I'm a lot sure. of people. So beware. All you fancy pants out there that are buying wine futures, beware who you buy it from because there's a lot of wine scams going on. Who knew? Who knew? Now we know. Okay. PSA. Okay. So the bankruptcy states that he had $45 million in ghost orders, but he was only able to like embezzle $5 million for his personal use. Wow. Yeah. $40 million of it. I mean, he the, those books have got to be. I mean, they've got to be so cooked, right? Yeah. And I mean, he had to be making, you know, payments on everything and yeah. whatever. But I mean, still, it's just, it's not that it's $70 million in debt. Wow. So, yeah. So at his sentencing, John had to face all the music all alone. No one showed up for him that day in court. His oh. wife divorced his ass and moved back to the Philippines where she was from. Um, he was sentenced to six and a half years in 2016 and ordered to pay $50 million in restitution. To which never happening. <laughs> never happening. <laughs> well, what is he gonna come out and do? Like he's he, not he has a plan, Tab. Let me tell you his plan. Oh, okay. Okay. He I says, can't wait to hear it. While he is locked up, he is going to take some computer classes mm. and start an online business when he gets out to repay his victims. Good luck with that. Well, that yeah. is, what kind of online business <laughs> is he having? Because I mean, starting a business is really hard. Just ask me. I, and I imagine it. he doesn't have very good credit, so he's not going to get any and, loans. No. And he's taking a computer class now at 68 years old. I'm just saying like, okay. Yeah. To grow 66, up on the computers. Yeah. So he'll be in his seventies when he's released, which, okay. So I wonder how his computer plan is working out for him because he was released a year early tab. Oh. He was released this February. Oh, he's out. Well, he's congratulations, out. John. I hope you're he is currently free. Wow. And where is he living? Did you find him? Is he on Facebook? No, he is not on Facebook. I am imagining he's not that computer literate. Or maybe he's afraid he's not going to make any friends. 
I'd be your friend, John. I'd like to know how it's going. I did find this interesting. So John served his time in Lompoc Federal Prison, which I'm very familiar with Lompoc. It's just north of Santa Barbara, but I had never heard of this prison. Have you ever heard of it, Tab? Nope. Okay, well, it is a, it's called a minimum security prison camp. So I think it's like one of those orange is the new black type facilities. So I think John got off pretty easy serving his time. It's not like he went to like San Quentin or something. Well, John also did a white collar crime. Yeah. Right. So they kind of, I think, give a little lenience on that. It's not. Yeah. I looked at the. Yeah. I mean, it just seems not too bad. I looked at the commissary list. I mean, it looked, it looked pretty decent. I mean, I don't think anybody probably put money on John's books. (laughs) You can buy buy, like all the junk food you want and like headphones. So, you know, it doesn't seem a bad life. The only thing is John didn't have his young, hot girls. He was already so old. So when he got out at the age of 71. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of 71 year old he was, but. I mean, I just think it's terrible what he did, but is it so he got away with it for so long? I mean, living the dream for so long. I mean, he's probably going to die like in the next five years. It just doesn't seem oh like God. he paid <laughs> enough. <laughs> he paid enough of a price. I don't think yeah, he paid he enough. Of at a 76. Price. It's still very young, dude. I mean, like, not young, but it's like young enough. Okay. Well, is he like an old 71? I'm asking. He looks road hard, put away wet for okay. sure. Okay. You okay. know, those Northern Californianers, they don't do the Botox or the, <laughs> you know. Look, my face looks their so eyes did. today. Jeff Lewis just got his eyes did. Oh, I was wondering. I knew that that's what he did. He got yeah. his eyes done. Yeah. I don't know if he really needed to look any more awake than he already did when we saw him. I, I didn't. Well, he's got a new show coming out. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't want to. He hasn't been on TV for a couple of years. So he didn't want to look aged. Okay. So I was wondering, how did all those wine collectors fare? Yeah, I, I am wondering that too. Okay, well, some of them were able to get their money back because they paid with their American Express. No way. Yeah, yeah you're an American Express fan. I okay, am. So That's this awesome. Will make you happy. Yeah, apparently American Express is pretty good about paying back their customers if they're the victims of fraud for the most part. Yeah. Okay, I do remember with that... Um, Anna Delvey case, it was, it took a while, but that young lady that was her friend Mm -hmm. got her money back from American Express because she was the victim of fraud. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, some of them, not everybody paid with American Express, right? Some of them got back partial payment from the restitution, you know, from what like was auctioned and everything. But according to an article that I found that was published in 2018, some people got what I call rat fucked. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I'm sure most people got rat fucked, by the way. Oh, no. This is rat fucked. Okay. This is like when you're fucked and then harder again. With a rat? Yeah. Sounds awful. Like the worst. Okay. So it turns out the people that were able to get their refund from Premier Crew within the 90-day period before he filed bankruptcy are now being sued by the bankruptcy court for what they received. So you have to figure the people that were able to squeeze like money out of him, it was like squeezing, you know, blood from a turnip, right? I mean, at that point, they had to be the most pissed off people. Yes. Okay. So they got, you know, whatever, some or partial refund from him. So now they're being sued. So now what this means for these people is that everyone who ordered wines from them that never received them, but were able to somehow get you know, partial refund or full refund, whatever, are now being sued by the government for that money. 
But these people never received any product. Most of the refunds that were issued to these people are between two and $10,000. And the government is asking them to pay back 80% of that. And it would cost them more to fight it. So they're just, so they just are doing it screwed. So they didn't receive, uh, they got a refund for a product they didn't receive. And now they have to hand that money over to the government. That is rat fucked. Oh my That's God. The definition. That's awful. Awful, yeah. awful. So that, I mean, that's a WAP. I mean, I say buyer beware on wine futures and sugar babies. But not sugar gliders. But not sugar <laughs> gliders. Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's a lot of work. When yeah. I say it's a lot of work, it is a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, Get a scout dog. By the way, the sugar yes. gliders, you do have to play with them. And take them out of their cage because if you don't for a couple of days, they bark all night long. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So I have that to look forward to. When you're here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Unless you stay at the hotel the whole time, which might actually be more beneficial. Maybe. For family. <laughs> okay. Oh, because I'm still trying to put the bed together. I mean, my whole house is a total disarray at the moment but we're getting through it okay um but i am very excited for you to come because you're coming here on wednesday and just in two days from when this episode airs which is yeah. so awesome um i can't believe i just made a big big mistake today damn it anyways we all drop the ball sometimes. I'm going to go uh, throw up in the bathroom for a second. <laughs> go out and face the wrath. Um, and let me give some shout outs. So we recorded a little early. So um, I don't have as many as usual. But I do have some. Okay. Olivia, 8906. It's Olivia. Thank you so much. I love the name she, Olivia. I know. Oh, I just got to look at myself. I wasn't, Wendy Surf. It's not good always. today. What? You don't like the way you look? No. This is my oh, fine. camp. Um, Drop, Wendy, thank you for posting book. our episode. Um, Wendy, I got ex I didn't write you back, but I did get extreme pleasure out of you sending Tab a adult ADHD thing because she's a 99 percenter that Dude. made me really happy. She really way, is. I, I have to like bug her to do shit all the time. I, I'm pretty sure I do have ADHD, like a hundred percent. I'm sure. I just <laughs> haven't taken medication for it. But you know. Another yeah. Olivia, her name is mm -hmm. um, I think she goes by Liv, which I mean so cute. So cute. Um, ridiculous Olivia. Melissa J, thank you so much. And I think that's all for this week. If you guys would like to give us a shout out, we will also return the favor and give you a shout out um, on your Instagram or wherever you do social media, except for Twitter, because I never freaking check it. So I'm so sorry. But Instagram and Facebook. Um, you know, I'm not a Twitterer, a tweeter, 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 a tweeter, tweeter, pumpkin eater. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you guys haven't given us a review yet on Apple and you listen on Apple, but I think people are switching to Spotify because, you know, they're taking all the. Oh, my God. Go Spotify. People the over coolest. there. Yeah, they are. They're like, Maybe fuck Apple. Take us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We'll <laughs> fuck Apple, too, if we can get some Spotify up in here. I mean, for a hundred million dollars, I can probably do Shoot. anything right now. Um, right. Pay me that and I'll be over there. No problem. One million. I, I can be, I have a price. Sure. <laughs> million? <laughs> um, One million pennies I'll take. Spotify, I'm available. Um, I just wanted to um, give a little uh, eat a banana. Oh, please do. To um, Beckett's lady which is really interesting but that's the name of it i could tell you why later 
but let's hope this is not the person because that's real fucking bitchy. If it is, I'm going to hope it's not somebody I know. So anyways, she says that we are, we don't write the description words correctly. What? No, I'm just saying, I'm like, list. I'm giving a one. What is the first thing we do wrong? I like to itemize these oh, okay. in my head. This one okay. is it. Okay. Well, it's really not our fault. I'm going to blame Damian, and I'm so sorry. He's our editor. We love him. But English is not his first language. So, oh, so you're a bitch, Beckett. That's what I think. I'm like, listen. Huh. Okay. We love him. And you know what he means. So go suck it. Don't you think? We love him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 100%. I think he's doing a great job. And I think his descriptions are. Spell really check excellent. yourself. Yeah. That's spell what I have to yourself. say. Yeah. She says second. They take about 15 minutes to get started. Um, You're right. Well, it's, seven. it's more like seven. It's seven. Every once in a while, we took a little bit longer, but. If you don't like that, then I just can't imagine you also like the way that we tell our stories. I don't know. I mean. Fast forward. Is Again, it just me? Sorry, I hurt your ears with my free podcast. <laughs> with my free podcast. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a Spotify person yet. <laughs> We're Nobody not paid. Spotify bitches, okay? <laughs> um, okay, give me number three. And finally, finally. Still on fire. Okay, They don't do a lot of research. Um, there's kiss been... my ass Beckett. No, listen, this Suck is the best. Dick. This is the okay. best part. Okay. She says, there's so many times where the other host will ask why or where, and the other one responds, I don't know. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I'm sorry. Even attorneys don't know. So the fact that we're honest. Okay. And I... let me tell you something Beckett. Let me tell you how other pod crime podcasts work. Oh, yes. They're scripted. So they don't like, we're like legit off the cuff. So they're like, the reason why those other podcasts don't say, oh, I don't know. I have to look, let's look that up. Why they don't do that is because they're told they, to say, yeah, they're told what to say. They're they told to say, I'll why tell you what did else? that happen? They couldn't handle that shit. What, off the cuff? No, they couldn't handle. They'd be like, yeah. Come, yeah. And we're like, we have no shame. We don't care if we sound stupid. Well, it's not that we sound stupid. We, we just don't know. We just don't Nobody pretend knows. like we don't and, know. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to tell you something oh that. God. But tell me I don't do any research. Listen, talk to my neglected children about that. They and, will disagree. And my husband. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> like the last thing he wants me to be doing real right mad now. at her right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I had to go record a podcast that wasn't the thing he wanted me to say in the middle of the day. Just saying. Okay. So. Anyways, um, there is that. Go eat a fucking dick. Beckett. It's lady. <laughs> Gretchen's just showing you on YouTube. Hopefully that's legal. <laughs> on the YouTube guidelines. <laughs> Anyways. I just had to scratch my face. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean. Okay. <gasps> That can, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, hopefully you guys all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening. You guys are all the best. Check us out on Patreon. If you do want the extra seven minutes or 20 minutes or 40 minutes or 50 minutes, patreon.com forward slash uh, housewives of true crime. Also, we have a new sponsor that we absolutely love. You guys probably heard the ad for it for Viore, but honest to goodness, I just got the shorts in the mail. It the most comfortable active yeah. wear you'll ever wear no, no joke. joke yeah no yeah joke. worth every penny get some yeah. get some all right um and that's uh viore.com forward slash htc okay i think we're good clink 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 <laughs>